All right, our next guest says Merck's suit against the Biden administration could cause a narrative shift in pharma. Jared Holtz is a healthcare sector specialist with Mizuho Securities. He joins us here on set at the NASDAQ. Jared, great to have you with us. Thank you. Um, what are your thoughts about whether or not this thing goes through? It's really, really tough to say. Um, I don't really think anyone knows whether it's going to go through or not. But, you know, this is Merck being very aggressive. Obviously, they pulled no punches with the language that they drew up today. And, you know, I expect other companies to follow suit here. Specifically in the case of Merck, if you did sort of do the math and you assumed, let's say, a minimum discount, 25 percent discount to a Genubia um, and to a, to a Keytruda, what would that mean to Merck? I mean, it basically means that the R&D spending and maybe SG&A in terms of how they run the company, these are going to have to be cut. I mean, we saw Novartis um, curtail its pipeline a couple of weeks ago, basically blaming future drug price um, initiatives as a reason for pulling back. So I think R&D spending is going to be cut. You could see SG&A go lower, too. So the whole complexion of how these companies are run broadly, I think, could change dramatically, you know, given whether it's 25 percent cut, 30, 60 even, so we'll see. It sounds like then, you know, the longer term potential impact would be that the most innovative drugs will be developed in biotech as opposed to by big pharma. Well, that's basically what's happening now. Yeah. So no major shift there. That's why I, I agree with some of the panelists earlier. I think you can probably own biotech here if you're worried about the complexion in pharma because they're going to have to be they're They're desperate now. I think they could be more desperate to augment their um, commercial businesses, their pipelines with other assets, where do they find them? Typically, small and mid-cap biotech. We're talking about Merck, but you had mentioned other names that are specifically under some risk here. Can you talk about that? Yeah, well, I think AbbVie, Amgen, Pfizer. I mean, most of the companies at some point will be under a lot of risk with respect to drug pricing, whether it's 2026, 28, 29. Remember, the government is basically taking a new look every year and, and going to come out with 10 new drugs that they think they need to kind of mess with. So at some point, even Lilly with Manjaro and some of these other, you know, major brands, everyone's going to be hit. It's just a matter of when. Is it 26? Is it 30? We don't know, but that's kind of the game plan. Jared, I, I can understand both sides on this. And, and, and it, that question, it's a political issue. It's an emotional issue. Uh, we want these companies to spend, spend, spend to develop these therapies, and, and they're the best in the world. And we, you know, coming out of COVID, we're all thankful for the money pharma has invested in their businesses. When the government says, not only in addition to these laws and pricing and how they're going to negotiate, that you have to agree that these rules are fair. Um, and this is where they're, they're, they're contesting this on a First Amendment right. Like, you're asking the drug companies to say, this is great. We think this is totally fair. We have no right to profitability. That's where this seems kind of absurd yeah. and, and where I think they have a lot of room to push back. I agree. I mean, I, th I think um, our understanding is that the drug companies are meeting with the government fairly regularly, and they're trying to, you know, talk to CMS about how they can improve the IRA, what they can do to actually streamline this process and make the economics more viable. And so far, based on the language in the Merck document today, it doesn't seem like that much progress is being made. But certainly, I agree that I feel like when you look at these companies and what they're going through and all the pushback on pricing and it's affecting their ability to do business, something has to be done. Um, so far, we've talked about drugs that are, you know, key to people's health, main, maintaining health. When you think about the new emerging class of weight loss drugs and when they eventually get insurance coverage, could these also be subject to this uh, forced discount? Yeah, I mean, it, it really is just a matter of when. Where's it end? Right. It, it will, so, they so will be hit at some that point. Are, that are seen as a holy grail mm. for the pharmaceutical industry. The reason why Lilly has run up so much could be basically cut in half in terms of price on the market much earlier than patent expiration. Well, not so much earlier, but once they become large enough, the government looks at them and they fall into some criteria of being material enough from a revenue standpoint. And yes, but, you know, we're in basically the, we're in the first year of these launches. So they've got another nine, call it, before there's real intervention here. So we got time for Lily.